So for the next step, we're going to have to find the electric field in the x direction. And that's going to be very easy, given that all the steps that we all already have, because we saw that we found the y direction by applying this, applying the sine theta to this integral here, finding the electric field in the x direction. All we have to do is just to change the sine theta into a cosine of theta. So that's all we have to do. So let's just change that and try to evaluate the integral. So see what, and see what we get. So the integral that we had was uh, lambda dx x squared plus z squared. So now we're going to go for the horizontal direction, cosine of theta. And then don't forget because since we're taking the rightwards direction as positive, and in this case it obviously points to the negative, like to the to the left. So we're going to have to add a negative here. So all we have to do now is to evaluate this expression. And using the same method as before, cosine of theta is going to be equal to uh, x divided by x, uh, the square root of x squared plus z squared. So this is going to be x divided by x squared plus z squared. So we're going to be left with this integral right here. From 0 to O, x I shouldn't have drawn this line. So you see that we arrive at an integral that's really similar to what we had before. The only difference is we have an x in the numerator this time. So that is going to be a variable as well. So the integral is going to be slightly different when we evaluate it. But essentially, this we do the same thing. We take this substitution. So you're doing that the bounds we change it the same way we did before 0 to alpha for x we get z tangent of theta for the denominator we get a z to the power of 3 and then a secant to the power of 3 and for dx we get z secant squared theta d theta so this is just exactly the same thing we did for for the right y direction electric field so cleaning up this expression a bit, we have all these z's here, they cancel out, so we just, we have just one left. The secant squared, they cancel out. And so you see that we have a tangent theta divided by secant theta. Well, like I said before, one of a secant theta is just cosine of theta. So multiplying tangent theta by cosine of theta, we get sine theta, d theta. So this is obviously something we know how to integrate, so let's just carry on with this. So 4 pi epsilon lambda divided by z, 0 to a sine theta, d theta. So integrating this, sine, integrating sine theta, we get negative cosine of theta. 0 to alpha. So don't forget the negative sign. So we have negative cosine of alpha plus 1, because cosine of 0 is going to be 1. And then what is cosine of alpha? So we can just draw the triangle again. So alpha is such that uh, L over Z is going to be equal to tangent of alpha. So in that case, cosine of alpha is going to be equal to Z divided by this length, Z squared plus L squared. So there we have it. I'm just going to move the the uh, negative sign inside, so we get uh, cosine of alpha, which is z divided by z squared plus l squared minus 1. And so there we have it. This is the electric field in the x direction. And so going back to the original problem, we're trying to find the electric field at the point P. So we found the horizontal and the vertical uh, components. So we found so let's, let's just copy down what we had. So for EX, we have this expression here. Minus 1. And for the Y direction, we have something that looks fairly sim similar. So for the Y direction, it's going to look something like this. So L divided by z squared plus L squared. So combining both of these expressions, we're going to arrive at a vector. So this is the 
the entire electric field. And the way we can bind these two components is to use the i and j vectors. So z squared plus l squared minus 1 points in the i direction. And then we have l divided by z squared plus l squared that points in the j direction. So this is the answer that we're looking for.